seems legit. Hello Legitimates, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making this swoon pattern called Lainey, which is like a beautiful hobo-y style tote, but we have used the fabulous panel with the little flying insects on the front of it. Uh, so we've done that as there and then the back we use the coordinating fabric but without all the bugs in it so that the only bugs kind of center and focus right in the middle and the rest of it's just like a beautiful floral scenery and I love that. The inside I have used waterproof canvas that came from the horror box. Um, there is no interfacing in this because I got the canvas in the outer print and the inside is waterproof canvas you don't actually need any interfacing so this is like a really quick beautiful bag I do still need to give it a final iron as you can see up the top here um, but I think it looks stunning it's like an over-the-shoulder off we pop down to the market style tote um, and it's really really quick and simple so if you need something to make a gift for someone I do recommend this pattern so let's go Right, let's get started. So, there is no hardware. I like this. This should be a nice, quick little sew. Um, so all we do is start this. Wait, which side is it? That way. So we're gonna attach this side here to this side here. So we're gonna start at the top and we're going to join it with some clips and then we're going to come to the bottom and we're going to join the bottom because while it looks like it doesn't fit it will so we're going to start like that and then if we continue around this curve everything should just fit together nicely now if you're making this out of fabric like I am you can probably get away with using pins if you wanted to and then just sew over the pins very real option or you can just not pin it but it does fit wonderfully so we're going to go to a joining stitch length which for me is two and a half and then i'm going to stitch and back stitch round we go and then back stitch at the end. Now, because this is canvas, I didn't use any interfacing. I decided it didn't need it. And then we're gonna fold this seam to the inside and we're gonna top stitch on that center main panel. So this is the back piece, because the front's got our um, panel on it. So I'm top stitching at an eighth of an inch. And I'm just pulling it apart because it is a curved line, so you want to kind of do it in sections and then back stitch. And see now it gives us like the shaping of the bag. Very cool. Now I need the other one. We're gonna do the same thing. You can also, if you want to, chain sew these. I'm going to see if I can do it without uh, the clips, just because I like to challenge myself. And it's much the same as making clothes that have like princess seams, except less curvy and therefore theoretically easier. And then we're going to tuck that. Oops. Trim that off. I haven't changed my stitch length for the top stitching. If you're making this out of vinyl, you definitely can do that. Um, or if you are doing like a solid colour and you want it to stand out, that also works. But you just want to make sure that that seam allowance is under where we're stitching. trim off the tails. Always trim your tails. So that's now one panel. So that's the back. The front's going to look way more exciting because we've got the panel. Now 
line it up. Under she goes. Please clip this if you're not used to doing this kind of sewing. Because it can be quite easy to misdo it. Pull it off, trim it. I am definitely going to run out of bobbin thread before this bag's finished, but that's okay. So again, I want to pull it so that the fabric's not folded over at all at the seam. And then I am top stitching an eighth of an inch from the edge. Now this bag is reversible, um, although I didn't pick a particularly reversible print. I mean, you could, but because it's got the, the center panel, I personally wouldn't wear it reversed. How cool does that look? What? All right. Grab the other one and then we're going to do the same to the lining. I've got the pieces here as well, but we're going to do the exact same to the lining as we are with the outside. Um, and so far it's only been five minutes and I've nearly half constructed the bag. So this should be one of those like under an hour quick projects that you want to make for someone. Although I don't know how long I took to cut out. I suppose there's that. Again, you don't have to clip it, but for the sake of teaching, always clip the two ends and then work your way through the middle. Done. You can also chain stitch these. So you could do like all the outsides, then all the linings, or you could do lining outside, lining outside. Always back stitch at both ends to lock it in. And then again, we're going to push that towards the center and then top stitch. the tails. Always trim your tails. They just annoy you otherwise. How cool does that look? Right, so the lining is the waterproof canvas I got in the horror box, which is like ghost trees. But the green works really, really well with this. Like it's perfectly matching. So that's why I chose this. But because it's a reversible bag, you could have actually done complete opposites on each side. Oh, what have we got? Here we go. So, I'll grab this one. Line it up. Again, you don't have to clip it if you don't want to. Or we can clip all the sides on and we, let's chain stitch this half because that'll be fun. Love chain stitching. It saves you on both time and money because there's less tails. So let's clip all of the lining pieces together now that you've seen what we're doing. And then I can chain stitch the lot. Do, 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 do. All right, so that's both of those, and then we'll clip both of these. So the short bit's the top, by the way. The pattern does show that it's directional, but I'm just letting you know. Clip at the bottom, clip at the top. Then we just join 
of the middle. It is the same length. The lines are the same length, they're just a different shaped curve, which helps give it the bend shape, the bendiness, whichever way you want to look at that. Alright, last piece. Pop it on here, and then we can chain stitch all of it, because I love a good chain stitch. And we're still only less than 10 minutes in. Now it obviously depends on how quick you sew, but you could definitely whip this up, even if you're a beginner sewer, you could still whip this up in a couple of hours and have a gift for someone. Or a bag for a trip. This would make a very cute, like, let's go to the beach shoulder bag. Or if you don't like carrying a lot, this would be a fun, like, let's go to the market bag. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make sure that these are not in the seams. And then we're going to pop it under and we're going to stitch and back stitch. We just have to keep an eye on the bobbin because this is the leftover bobbin from the last bag I did. Right, under we go, stitch and back stitch. I'm going to chop off this first one so it doesn't fall on the floor. Stitch and back stitch, and then I'm going to grab that first one again. Sometimes doing all the clipping and then all the stitching works out a little bit quicker as well. So get to here, cut that one off. It can also be like a dragging weight, which is why you don't want it to stay attached if possible. I can hear that I'm starting to run out of bobbin thread. Possibly should have checked that before I start, but you know. This bag is obviously definitely domestic friendly as well. Trim them off. So now I've got all the pieces. Now I still want to top stitch because it'll help hold that seam down and flat. But before I do that, I am just going to check the bobbin. Oh no, we should be right. At least for a while. So I'm going to hold this to get my bobbin thread up. We hold it and just do a full circle and then tug and I slide the snips underneath it. Okay so now we can chain sew the top stitching. So I'm still going to do exactly what I did for the other one. I didn't back stitch then but that's okay. It'll survive. You just want to make sure that the seam is underneath where you're sewing. That bit is important. Back stitch, grab the next one. So again, push it to the center. We're gonna go underneath and we're gonna stitch and back stitch. And then we're gonna cut this first one off and do the other side. So again, I'm gonna push it to the center or towards the center. Under it goes. Back stitch. One more. This will also help, like you can see the difference in the seam. This one sits flatter than this one. See how this one's not sitting as flat? It's just one more reason why we should stitch it. Stitch, back stitch. Now if you wanted to, a contrasting thread, if you did like a solid colour bag, like a nice indigo linen or something, a contrasting top stitch would look amazing. In my brain it's navy and white, but you could do any of it. Alright, so we're going to take our two lining pieces together and the first thing I'm going to do is line up that seam. And I'm going to put one clip on each side so that it can't shift and then I'm just going to skip straight over to the other side and do exactly the same thing. So you want that seam to be perfectly lined up. 
like that. Then if you want to, you can add some more clips along this curve, but these should be exactly the same size and shouldn't give you much drama. Then I'm going to come up to the top here, make sure those two line up at the end, and then work my way down. Now this bag has little ties in the center, but I've decided I don't want them on it. Um, but essentially they are just two ribbony width pieces of fabric. So you can tie the bag closed. I think its shape will be fine without it, uh, but you obviously can add the tie. The beauty of making your own bag is that you can add and subtract whatever you like. For example, if you weren't going to use this as a reversible bag, or even if you were, you could put a zipper pocket in the center of the panel. You could put a zipper pocket kind of right here. Um, I obviously haven't done that, but you definitely could. Okay, half my clips are going to be upside down, that's okay. So we're going to start at the top here, and I'm going to stitch and back stitch. And I have to keep an eye on my bobbin. And I'm going to put the weight of the bag on the table. Round the curve. Just run out there. Let's do a new bobbin. Bobbin has been refilled, so I'm just going to go back like an inch and I'm going to stitch and back stitch, and that will lock in the old stitches as well as the new ones. And do that last little bit. I mean, I got close to the end. And then I'm also going to cut off the tails at that end too. So that's the lining piece done. Now we're going to do the outside. So again, I'm going to line up that side seam and add two clips. If I had have got um, cotton instead of the canvas, so I've used canvas on the outside and then waterproof canvas for the inside, which is why I didn't feel the need to put interfacing. But if this was just like woven cotton, I would probably put a medium interfacing on at least the outside. Probably all pieces would get a medium interfacing just to make it that little bit more sturdy. Add some clips into the middle. Now depending on what kind of panel you got will depend on if this bag would work for you because depending on how big your panel is you might either cut a little bit off and so it fits and just kind of focus on like if this was a slightly bigger panel you would focus on your favorite bug um, and then make sure that that one's not chopped off at the edges. I have chopped panels before to just use the bits that I want. It's really not as bad as it sounds. It just looks like it's coming out of the side. All right, so that's now clipped. We're gonna stitch and we're gonna back stitch. slower towards the seam because I don't want it to slip while I'm stitching. We really do want it lined up as best as possible. And back stitch. Lift that up. 
trim off the tails. I see a tail I missed earlier and the tails at the start of that line. Now, if you want to, you can turn it through and check those seams. I'm quite happy with that. That looks really pretty. Ta-da! I know it looks a bit floppy. It's meant to be a floppy bag. But to help that sit even nicer, zigzag scissors. Because the whole thing's a curve, we are just going to trim off the excess. We're going to do this to the lining piece as well. This will also help the bag to sit together nicely because there'll be less um, seam allowance to clash on the inside of the bag. But we're using the zigzag scissors because they're all curves and I want it to be able to sit nicely. So there's that one. We're going to do the same to this one. Trim it down. And the zigzag scissors also help prevent fraying. If you wanted to, on this particular bag, you could also overlock this edge. I'm just looking at it, I'm like, it would be fine. This here might get a little bit thick, but it's nothing too crazy. So if you wanted to, and you've got an overlocker, you could just overlock this whole edge. It would make it more stable as well, especially if you don't have the more thick thread that I'm using for bag making. If you're just making this out of normal sewing thread, overlocking it will just make it that much stronger so it won't fall apart with use. Or overuse is probably a better word. I used to make all fabric bags with just normal thread. It is possible. They won't stand the test of time forever, but you can still do it. This one would be perfect to just make on a domestic machine with normal thread. And off you go. So, turn one of the pieces inside out. It doesn't really matter. I'm just doing this one in my hand. Oh, it looks pretty. And then we're just going to shove, and I'm literally going to shove, one piece into the other. Like this. Then, I've done enough shoving. So I want to line up the edge and we're going to clip out, that was my finger. I'm going to clip the end. Then I'm going to come to that seam. We just want to match up all the seams before we do anything else. All right. So the seam there is done. Now if you want to, you can do these bits. Now don't be fooled. It does fit even though it looks like it's buckling. It's just because this bit's on an angle so you might be stretching the fabric. Especially if you're like me and don't have interfacing. So I'm going to do the other end. Clip. And then I'm going to come to this joining part here. And I want to make sure those seams are very much lined up. And then we're just going to clip that bit together. Now the bag is quite floppy, which funnily enough means clipping is a better option than not. When you've got lots of interfacing, it's quite stiff and stays where it's told. When there's none like this, it can get a bit casual. Okay, so we've done one side. Let's stitch that entire side together, then we'll do the other side. 
I'm not pinning or clipping both sides because I feel like the clips are going to get in my way and I just don't want to. So, along we go. Where possible, put the bulk weight of your bag onto the table. It will make it easier to sew because if you've got this hanging down, depending on what fabric you've used, it could actually pull on the bag and distort the stitches. You might not get a nice straight line from it. So it's just a thought. And backstitch. Trim. Tails at the other end, trim them off too. So that's one side done. Now let's go and do the other side. So again, I want to line up that seam. I'm just going to put one clip there though, because technically I am not stitching this middle bit yet. Because I need to leave a gap somewhere to be able to turn the bag through. And that gap I have decided will be here, like the pattern says. Now, the thicker your fabric, the bigger the gap you should leave. So if you've made this like out of a poultry fabric and made like a carpet bag, uh, you're going to want to leave a bigger hole than if it's a lighter weight like this. I mean, this is still canvas, but it's not so thick that I'll have to drag it through a really big hole. Just something to think about is all I'm saying. So now that they're all done, I'm actually going to take off both of those clips where they were joined in the center because I'm going to leave my gap here. So we're going to start at the end. Stitch and back stitch. You could also leave it kind of in the armhole here. So I'm going to get to this clip and then I'm going to back stitch and stop. Now I am just wondering how big of a gap I leave. Again, probably don't need all of that. Might pick it up here. So I'm just gonna leave, what is that? Yeah, four inches. I'm gonna leave a four inch gap to turn through. The smaller the gap, the more fiddly it'll be. However, it'll be easier to sew up, which we still have to do. So just a thought. But if you've got bad hands or elbows or shoulders or whatever, just leave a bigger gap to make it less tricky. Stitch and back stitch. And trim the tails as you see them. So here's my gap. It's big enough that I can get my whole hand in, which will make this easier. And then we just pull the bag through. Here's one of my strap parts. And then we just need the other strap part. Lots of green, I'm loving this. Okay. And then we're just gonna put, I'm gonna put the lining inside the bag. I'm just doing this with my hands to make it sit nicely. of which it is currently not, if you can see that. And then I'm just gonna roll the seam through my fingers and put clips. Like I always do, we're going to clip it. I'm also starting to wonder if I should have maybe trimmed the excess fabric with scissors on the strap pieces, so maybe I will do that. Not that I really want to be turning this inside out again. However, I also do want it to sit nicely. So because of that, 
Turn it inside out. Grab my zigzag scissors. This will help it bend more freely since it is one giant bend, really. Pull this out now. Theoretically, this will now sit nicer and be less stubborn. Kind of. Kind of doesn't make a huge difference either though. Just looking at it. All right. So let's put clips. We're gonna just roll that seam so it's exactly where we want it for good top stitching. So I'm getting right on that edge because again, this is a reversible bag option. Not that I'd reverse this one because the panel's fabulous, but you could, in which case you want both sides to be equally as glorious. And if you've used like opposite colors of your bag, you can have the bobbin and the top stitch threads a different color so that they match each half of your bag. That would work lovely. All right, then when we get up the top here, we're gonna pick one half and I'm gonna tuck in the edges of one half of the strap. And then we're gonna grab the strap from the other side, make sure it's lined up on its edges and then poke it into the hole so that everything's lined up pretty. Like so. Now you can hand stitch this shut, but I won't be, I'll tell you that right now. I will be top stitching. So we're actually gonna start our stitching here. We're gonna start here, we're gonna go all the way around, then we're gonna go across and all the other side. So it's one continuous stitch to top stitch the entirety of the bag, which I think is kind of cool. Because I like to be clever like that. But again, if you wanted to, you could hand stitch that shut. I just won't be. So again, we're going to roll this onto the edge. You could quite easily make this out of vinyl if you wanted to. I just wanted to do a slouchy bag for a change. I always do such structured bags and not everybody enjoys a structured bag. Some people just like a simple fabric, rolls up small, holds some stuff. It's like a hippie kind of bag. Not in this print, but I do have a mate that would love this style of bag. So now that we've pinned the side that we stitched all the way, we're going to come and address this gap. So we're going to tuck in the raw edges, lining up the seam. Pin it shut or clip it shut. Do you want to look at it? So that we can't see any raw fabric. So I'm just literally popping it in. I put my finger in and that pushes it down and then you kind of pull tight, which is a little bit hard to do because of the curve, but it's not impossible. All right, and you want to have lots of clips at that section so it can't move. And then we're going to continue around the whole bag. So I'm just rolling that constantly in my fingers to make sure that the edge is right at the edge. More clips. I do have more clips than these, but these are my awesome ones from the Ghana sewing room. So I don't I don't really use my other ones anymore because these ones are pretty. I won't throw them out. As these die, I will slowly replace them back with the other ones, but hopefully that won't be for a very long time. 
To make your clips last longer, don't have them directly in sunlight. Sun and plastic are never good friends. All right, last little bit. I gotta just move my clips along a little bit. There we go. So that is now all the way around both sides of the handles clipped together. So I'm gonna start at the, the join, but I'm not gonna stitch the join first. We're just gonna start there. So we're gonna slide it under. Now this is gonna be slow. I am gonna stitch same stitch length because I haven't changed it anywhere else in the bag, but I'm gonna stitch, back stitch, and I'm gonna do a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. You always wanna stop with the needle down before you reposition the bag. Now there's no, normally I would turn this inside out so that I could top stitch, but because there's no interfacing, it's slouchy enough that I can just shove it where I want it. Manhandle it into submission, I believe is the term that someone once used, and I love that. Slow and steady wins this race. This is fiddly, if nothing else, and we want it to look the best that it can. Needle down, and then again, I'm going to pull some more of the bag around. There is a little bit of bulk there, but it's nothing a domestic machine shouldn't be able to handle. Depending, of course, on how much interfacing you put into your bag. If you put crazy amounts, it might get a bit thick. You also want to make sure that you're not getting any puckers under your top stitching. And so now I'm back to that join. I'm going to stitch on the join. We're going to rotate with the needle down. We're going to stitch across to the other side. And then we're going to pivot. Now my foot is equal on both sides, so I can do an eighth of an inch. And that way the bulk of this is still out of my machine. But if you don't have that option, you'll just have to have the bulk in here. Luckily for you, you can scrunch this up if you need to. But I can do an eighth of an inch on each side. Because I'm using the opposite hand to pull off clips, uh, this probably will be a slower process. And that's okay. So it's going to look a little bit crazy. Oh, you can't see because it it's directly behind the machine. But basically ignore what the rest of the bag's doing. We only care about where we're top stitching. I literally don't care about the rest of it. You can even turn it inside out if it's bothering you. I'm more concerned about knocking over my clips at the moment. More than pretty much anything else. Pretty sure I'm up to the bit where I'm joining it and closing it. another one of those slow and steady wins the race type moments. I'm going to get my sew all just to make sure it stays lined up because I can't get my fat fingers in there. Normally I would just use my fake nails but I don't have them either. And again it's bubbling a little bit, so I'm just going to use the sew all to hold it down and in place so that I don't get weird bubbles in my top stitching. Easy bit, we're on a straight. Straights are always easier. You can also iron this. I probably should have mentioned that. You can definitely instead iron this whole thing if that's more your jam. 
And then we're going to back stitch when we get back to the start. Trim the tails off. Now it looks a bit, a bit much, but again, you can shove it all. So there's one side. That's technically the lining for me, but that's because I picked that as a lining. And then when we turn the bag out, how fantabulous is that? So it's just like a nice little on the shoulder, off we go, down the street, shove everything in it, bucket bag. But it's got a fabulous panel on it. Now it's meant to be slouchy. Um, but I really like it. I think it's adorable. To take photos of something like this, you will want to stuff it with like a small cushion or something just to have it there. It did have that tie option, which would bring it in. But again, I didn't really like that. But you can put it. You could also, if you wanted to, put like a magnetic snap here if that's more your choice. But it fits on the shoulder really nicely as just a shoulder bag. Not a lot's going to get out of it under my arm. There's not like a big gap. It's just comfy and adorable. So there you go guys, please uh, if you do decide to make one with a panel please come and show me in my Facebook group or tag me on Instagram or something because I always love to see what others come up with. Alright guys, till next time, bye bye.